Hey everyone, so this is Owen from Research is Broken. So today I want to build, well, continue building my Flesh Eater Quartz Army. This time around, I am going to build the Knights, the Flesh Eaters, Heavy Heaters. Uh, <laughs> so right now, uh, what I'm planning to do with my build is that I'm not just going to make a single uh, Crypt for uh, Crypt Flyer. But I'm planning to make a model that you can transform into either a Crypt Flyer or a Crypt Horror depending on what you need in your army. So if you're interested on what I'm about to build, um, enough chit chat for me. Let's continue and let's look at the working table. Okay. So here is an example of what I'm trying to make um, as a finished product. So. I'm sure you've got better painting skills than I have. So, um, but the idea here is that um, here's a Crypt Flayer, and then just like that, you can get a Crypt Horror. So, the, through the power of magnets. <laughs> Alright, so just a disclaimer this is from a different bit not from the same bit because i kind of ruined the the original hand of him in case you notice that there's two uh crypt horrors holding a gravestone but uh, it's w very easy to have to interchange their hands Alright people, so this is what you'll need, of course, very important, the bits for your knight, your model bits, and then some cutter, and then the drill bit and the drill. I use super glue, but I know some of you use other adhesive stuff, not really important for me what you use and then this is very important uh, a putty and a five by one magnet to attach to the limbs of your model then of course uh, you might need this uh, an exacto knife to clean up the bits of your model now what i like about the models um, bit is that um, there are three choices when you make this model now you could either make it into a crypt horror into so crypt horror this is the part that's important then crypt flayer and uh, interestingly enough uh, legion of nagash model which are the vargeist which you can see the difference from this. They're like Crypt Flayers, but they use um, a more cleaner back, uh, has hair instead of muscles protruding. So this is the back of the uh, Crypt Flayer with the Flesh Eater Quartz. So when we make the model, um, I'm just gonna show you how to make the um crypt infernal courtier model which is the leader of this unit because once you know already how to make it the rest are far more easier to make so the the crypt infernal really is the most complicated to build because of his back the the, the bones protruding and uh, the trophy so yeah let's start all right so now, I'm going to get the Crypt Infernals sprue, and then the first thing I do is pick out the torso, this, this, and this, and assemble them. I would really suggest that you don't take out all the sprues. Uh, the bits out of the sprue that way you don't lose any part 
It'll be easy just to find them once again. So first, I'm just gonna get these parts here and make it into a torso, okay? All right, so I've removed the bits that will be formed into a torso. And next thing I'm going to do is use super glue to attach these three pieces here. Then uh, glue them together to form the Crypt Inferno torso. So I'll put a glue, super glue here, here, and then around this area here now to form into a torso. Right. And the torso has been formed. And the next part that I want to do is get the legs first of our knights because I want to have uh, an orientation so that when we attach the head I don't want the head to be um, aligned too low as if he's looking down so I want to see how the legs would be um, aligned to make sure that the head won't look so strange when we attach them. I've managed to attach his right leg already and the next part here is to assemble his other leg which requires the legs to be attached because it's two part so keep that in mind when you're making this model all right so i've now attached both legs of our model and so now my next plan is to attach the head now the head is actually not found in this sprue but there on the other two sprues, there are two head designs that you could find. So there is the, I just say the green goblin like head, if you want to. And then there is the orcish head. So uh, for me, this time around, I want to get the, wait, uh, let me show you the orcish heads. So this one here. And this one, and then for the green goblin like design, this one, this one, and the other one is right here. Sorry about that. Wait. Here. So, for my assembly, I'm going to get the orc like head because. My leader has a blame. <laughs> so there. So now we've got the head. So it's going to be very easy for me to see if the alignment is good. Now that the torso and the arms are attached. I, I can even, if I want to be dynamic, I can even decide how the head would be attached to make it more dynamic. Alright, so now that we're done attaching the head, the plan is to now attach the spiky bits on the back of the infernal uh, courtier or just the Crypt Infernal so for me it's best that it would be freeform you can find the spiky bits all over on the there are actually a lot of choices on the spiky bits that you can put in and if you have no idea actually on where to put this the, 
the instructional manual actually has three uh, here uh, designs that you can follow so you can get it from either the crypt horrors design or the crypt uh, flayer because there's some difference and also the crypt hunters uh, courtiers design so it's really up to you which one or if you're um, just lazy I think just this one put here would be enough so there are actually seven holes that you can uh, attach these bits these spiky bits on the back and if you you really don't need to put in all the holes because you can cover it except for this one because this is the most glaring uh, hole on its back so yeah I would suggest if you try, if you want to skip on the other holes you can but this one you should put in some bit on it because it would really look glaring if you don't so yeah all right so I finished attaching all the spiky bits for my model so my next move is I'm going to take out all the wings and the arms now since I have planned to magnetize some of these limbs so that I can change the model into what I need uh, for people who have plans to just stick to one figure I would suggest not to attach uh, to my uh, no not attach uh, not to use super to glue uh, the head because it would be difficult to paint some parts like the body since see this one would obstruct your ability to paints this part especially if the hand is already uh, attached so I would really suggest uh, instead of assembling it one time especially for crypt flayers because their wings are very large it would block some parts of the body so I would suggest instead of one time gluing them uh, sub assembly first then after painting everything that's when you glue them all together now for those people who are like me planning to magnetize well it's okay since uh, there's still some parts there's a very big area for you to paint over its torso nearly any part of the body so now after I get all the wings and the arms actually the wings is easy because it's just one uh, bit all in all but the arms you have an option of getting the one without weapon or not my plan is to get this one with weapon because i like my models to have um, a little bit of uh, character to them really so yeah so now i've got finished assembling the arms taking out the wings of for the model's bits so now my plan is to drill holes here here and make some holes here too here here and here so that I can put in the epoxy putty to those hold areas and then put the magnets by then we're almost done so I've made holes to the models using a bit. Uh, the hole size that I'm making, it doesn't really matter if um, it fits to a T because that's not our goal here. Our goal here is to make a hole um, big enough that it, the magnets could potentially pass through so 
Um, this is actually big enough, but I I didn't want it to go beyond the body. So so that when you use the epoxy putty, you just cover the hole here, scope it, and cover it, cover it here, and then put the magnet uh, put a magnet inside. Chuck, done. No need to be very exact. So that's the plan. So if you're like me, uh, and your magnets are not color coded to their poles, what I do to make sure that both my, uh, both the magnets that I've attached here and to the limbs will actually attract, uh, what I do is I just paint it over. But it does take time for the paint to dry. <laughs> So if you find yourself a magnet with a color coded uh, side, that can actually save you some time. So it took me a day to completely finish uh, putting the magnets to the models. So now I can attach them to the model. There. So it's set. And the thing about it is the epoxy takes at least a day for it to harden. So what I did was I already went ahead and formed the rest of his unit. And all I had to do is do the same and drill some holes, put some magnets. And then from here on, all I have to do is prime these models and start painting them. So yeah, it's that easy. To assemble the crypt fin. Oh, and I've also <laughs> primed some elf. So in case I get bored with just painting the uh, undead, I got a choice of painting some elves as well. So I hope you'll have fun making your uh, crypt horror or crypt uh, flare uh, flyers as much as I have. And I hope I have taught you another method of. Uh, assembling these models okay so for any comments or uh, any reactions you have with the video don't forget to uh, write it down and like this if you like this video and subscribe as well bye guys